Hey guys, check this out. If I open a JavaScript console by my side and an adjacent Python terminal window on the other. Now watch this. If I execute a comment saying math.random in my JavaScript console, I get an output. But the magic happens here. If I run the same comment in my Python terminal, oh look at that, both of them are same. And in fact, irrespective of how many number of times you run this comment, either of the places, you will get some satisfactory identical results. But oh wait, 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 that's not the plan. I mean, that's not the thing which I wanted to show you. What I want to do is prediction. Prediction of the future. I want to predict the number that the computer wants to generate beforehand. Before even doing something, let's first understand what something random means. According to Wikipedia, in common usage, randomness is the apparent or actual lack of definite pattern or predictability in information. That's clean. So theoretically, if something is stopping us from guessing the randomness is our lack of perspective or ignorance of information. Let's say we flip a coin. Now we can predict whether it's gonna be a head or tail only if we exactly know what are the parameters affecting it, like force, wind speed, torque, velocity, drift. But for a normal human, a coin flip is something totally random. But does that mean that for a computer the same thing will happen? Well, hear me out. This actually is true. Various systems within the computer chip generate entropy as they operate due to inefficiencies and heat generation as such. Computers can actually measure entropy generating hardware as a way of obtaining a true random number. These really are true random numbers since entropy is the randomness of the universe and is inherently unpredictable. All computers running on modern x86 architecture that is the 64-bit Intel chips or any AMD chips since 2015 can be run on the instructions of RDC which probes the entropy generation hardware to generate a new true random number. So what does the computer do? It takes in an initial value can be anything from a source like the heat of the microchip, procedural timings, date, portion of a timestamp. This initial value is called a seed that I was talking before. This seed is used to generate the next number in the sequence and so on. This self-feeding algorithm repeats after every certain point. It's called its period. The better the system is, the bigger the period because the system would have the capacity to generate more random numbers before looping onto itself. Now in JavaScript, there is a function under the math library called as random. It comes with almost all the native JavaScript engines. Speaking of engines, the services like Node.js use a service called as V8, which can be elaborated by another SMT solver, Z3. We will talk about it later. V8 is maintained by Google itself, and it's an open source in GitHub. If we enter the space made for random function, we can see a peculiar name, XR Shift 128 Plus, and that's how it is coded. Wait, wait, don't get confused or bored. This is how it works. The initial parameters in the function definition are some system values. Inside the function, there are two states, 0 and 1. State 0 becomes state 1 in the next step, and after all the mathematical calculations with the predetermined constants, the state 1 becomes what you get as an output, the random number. Now, there is not much of a need to actually dig into the algorithms mentioned in V8 since we can refer to Z3. Z3 was developed in the research in software engineering group at Microsoft Research and is targeted at solving problems that arise in software verification and program analysis. The default input format for Z3 is SMTlib2. It also has officially supported bindings for several programming languages including C, C++ and Python. Now, SMTlib is an international initiative aimed at facilitating research and development in Satisfiability Modulo Theories SMT. You can pause and give this page a visit, again the link is in the description. Inside Z3 program shell, we define some random variables and some conditions along with, and it will shoot a finished model at me which would be our solution. Luckily, Python offers us a Z3 program shell, and we can code in that. Now let's put V8 code on one side and try to recreate a prediction model for this. I start off by creating two variables, 64-bit values using Z3 placeholders. But to train the model, we need some random values as a sample. So I went to JavaScript and got myself some values, and I put them in the list. Now I need to reverse the list, since the random numbers are generated from the XOR shift 128 plus method and are popped out in a last in first out order from an internal entropy pool and the sequence of the numbers provided in the script is expected to be in this reverse order. The next block of code 
would be a simple copy paste from V8 code. But there's a catch to it. The state zero variable has a random number, which is really huge one. So it is truncated down between 0 and 1. But exactly how does it happen? Well, according to a computer bit presentation by IEEE 754, a 64 bit number is broken in three sections. The first bit represents the arithmetic sign of the number, 0 representing a positive number, while 1 representing a negative number. The next 11 bits represent the exponent, and the other 52 bits represent a mantissa. Mantissa means a fractional part of the number. The number is actually in the form of sign multiplied by 2 to the power of exponent multiplied by mantissa. Now we can iterate through our sequence of random numbers and change it to double by this method and then we unpack it as a 64 bit unsigned integer. Then we get the lower 52 values from the piece of code which is the mantissa and we subtract 1 from it. In the next line we add the constraint so that we can compare the different mantissas so that the code can check if the solver can find a satisfying assignment for the constraints. If a satisfying assignment exists, then it means that the seed states leading to the provided sequence of random numbers have been found. If a satisfactory assignment is found, the code extracts the seed values and computes the next random number in the sequence based on the recovered seed. So how shall I test it? First I will generate a new set of random numbers from JavaScript. Then I will put them into the model and run it. Oh, we get an output. Well, well, so according to our code, this should be our next random number, which would be generated by our computer. Let's check that. I will generate one more random number from the JavaScript console to see if they match. And yes, they do. But many applications use such random number generators. What about them? They are insecure and they tend to vulnerabilities. One way to secure all this is to use cryptographically secured pseudo-random generators. This is a Wikipedia page actually, giving descriptions about the same. You can literally view it, the link is in the description. With some complex math and the predictability of such a random number generators are made secure. And yeah, that might be a topic for a different video, but hey, you got the idea, right? You can now predict the future. Go surprise your friends.